We're in front of uh, McKinney Smith's campaign office. She's uh, running for uh, the Liberal uh, position in the in the uh, provincial election. It's only a few weeks away, eh? mm -hmm. um, and exactly. we're we're here with uh, show the truth because even though the Conservatives are not totally on board with life and they haven't really done much in terms of supporting life in the provincial legislature or the federal parliament at least they're open to the possibility and there is some hope with that party but with the liberals and the NDP uh, there's no hope for life in their party they they are adamantly pro-choice and I was talking to the campaign manager and he's very proud of that position so we thought we just uh, highlight some of the uh, provincial life issues which are not really being talked about in this uh, election campaign so far but one that comes to mind first is the funding of abortion which is provincial that's a, that's a provincial issue so from what I understand the Canada Health Act uh, is only supposed to fund medically required procedures so I'm wondering why are they why have they ever funded abortion yeah, I mean, we know that it's never medically necessary to save a woman's life. And, um, like I always like to tell people, the Dublin Declaration is something which over a thousand physicians have signed, saying, yeah, there's no reason which a woman needs an abortion to save her life. And so that, that argument that people will come up with, saying, well, what about when the woman's life is in danger? It's not applicable to the case of abortion ever. Well, yeah, I've heard that too, but... What about in the case of, say, an ectopic pregnancy, a tubal, a tubal pregnancy? Doesn't an abortion have to be taken and done then to save the life of the woman? Well, no, because you're not directly like taking away the child's life. You're not violently dismembering and decapitating them as you would with an abortion. Basically, with a uh, ectopic pregnancy, you're just cutting the section of the fallopian tube that the embryo has implanted in. And unfortunately, we don't have the medical <coughs> technology to save that embryo's life at this moment. But we're not actively killing that child. They're just passing away, right? Because we, we don't have the technology to save them. Right. So even in that case, that's not an abortion because you're not directly killing the child. That's just an unfortunate consequence of basically saving the life of the mother. Because in that situation, the child is not likely to survive either. And certainly the mother's life is, is definitely threatened in that situation. Exactly. What about the case in Ireland? You know, yesterday was the Irish... Uh, referendum and uh, I think unfortunately they voted to repeal the Eighth Amendment. They did, yeah. They did, yes, overwhelmingly apparently. Um, well, I, I didn't find it surprising obviously because Ireland's kind of always followed in the footsteps of the West. They're usually like, what, like 10 to 15 years behind us? Mm -hmm. So I didn't find it surprising. Obviously disappointing, but not surprising. Right. Now, I know someone was telling me they saw in some of the the pro-choice parades, you know, in favor of repealing the Eighth Amendment. They saw a poster of that unfortunate, uh, I think it was an Indian woman, young Indian woman who died uh, of an infection actually, and she couldn't get an abortion. So they're sort of using her as a, as a poster child for, here's a woman who would have been saved if she could have had access to a, a timely abortion. Now, what's your understanding of that case? Well, I'm not familiar with that exact case, but I would say that uh, women are still allowed to go through with like um, chemotherapy and radiation and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. Because again, it's not it's not being done with the intention of killing that child's life. It's done with the intention of saving the mother's life, and that's right the difference between those two. Right. Yeah. Yeah. In the case of chemotherapy, if if the woman finds out, you know, during her pregnancy that she has an aggressive form of cancer and, you know, can't really wait until the end of the pregnancy, well, it's up to her. She could exactly. choose to wait because there is the potential of harming the child, but really it's her choice to accept treatment and, uh, and if the child is uh, killed as a result of irradiation or chemotherapy, that's not an abortion. That's an uh, unfortunate consequence of treating the mother for a life-threatening uh, situation, but you're not going in there and directly killing the child. So that, even in that situation, that's not an abortion. Yeah. Now, well, from what I understand in the, in the case of that Irish woman, she had a massive infection. And the reason she died was because they used the wrong antibiotic, apparently, and apparently too late. And so actually, from what I've read, doctors have said that, in fact, having an abortion would, would have been the absolute worst thing to do to her because that would have traumatized her body so much that right. she probably would have died even quicker. Yeah. But the, the pro-choice 
uh, element as making it out that if she would have survived, if only she could have had a, an abortion. But that's completely false medically. Yeah, but we know the pro-choice side, well, pro-abortion never favors science, right? If they did, they wouldn't be pro-abortion in the first place. Exactly. Facts and scientific facts, especially, they seem to ignore. Yeah. So, I guess that's not surprising, but it's unfortunate that people accept that without looking into it themselves. And the fact that they had all these big, huge posters of that woman, uh, implying that we need to have access to abortion to save women's lives. Right. And they, well, they would have went with that example because they're looking for any reason to justify all the, you know, aunts, cousins, sisters, mothers that they know who have had abortions themselves. And they're looking for any reason to kind of uh, justify that decision that those people made in their lives. That's what I think is going on, really. Yes, that's true. Yeah, we've all been touched by abortion, either directly or indirectly. And, and I find in talking to people who are, who call themselves pro-choice, often they've been touched very closely and it's difficult if you're if your own sister or mother or you know best friend has had an abortion it's difficult for you to come out negative against that because you know that sort of puts them in a bad light mm -hmm. so. yeah when it really it's just the act it's not the person committing the act right right yeah we're not to judge the person but we can judge the act an abortion is an intrinsic evil and is always wrong <laughs>